This is lesson 2.3, Conditional Statements. Your objectives are to analyze statements in if-then form and to write converses, inverses, and contrapositives. If-then statements. An if-then statement is a statement such that if you are reading this page, then you are studying math. A statement that can be written in if-then form is called a conditional statement. The phrase immediately following the word if is the hypothesis. The phrase immediately following the word then is the conclusion. A conditional statement can be represented in symbols as P to Q, which is read P implies Q, or if P, then Q. Identify the hypothesis and conclusion of each conditional statement. If it is Saturday, then there is no school. The hypothesis comes after if, so the hypothesis, it is Saturday. The conclusion comes after the word then. The conclusion is, there is no school. If hypothesis, then conclusion. Number two, if x minus 8 equals 32, then x equals 40. The hypothesis, x minus 8 equals 32. The conclusion, x equals 40. Notice, the word if is not in the hypothesis, and the word then is not in the conclusion. Number three, if a polygon has four right angles, then the polygon is a rectangle. The hypothesis, a polygon has four right angles. The conclusion, the polygon is a rectangle. If hypothesis, then conclusion. And again, if is not a part of the hypothesis, then is not a part of the conclusion. Write each statement in if-then form. Ask yourself, which part of this statement happens because of the other part of the statement? All apes love bananas. Are you an ape because you love bananas, or do you love bananas because you're an ape? You love bananas because you're an ape. So, if an animal is an ape, then it loves bananas. Number five, the sum of the measures of complementary angles is 90. Are angles complementary because the sum of their measures is 90? Or is the sum of their measures 90 because they're complementary? For this one, actually, it could go either way. So choose the best way that you think and make sure it's grammatically correct. If angles are complementary, then the sum of their measures is 90. Number six, collinear points lie on the same line. Are points collinear because they lie on the same line, or do they lie on the same line because they're collinear? I think the best way to do this one is to say if points are collinear, then they lie on the same line. Converse, inverse, and contrapositive. These three statements are related conditionals that are related to the original conditional statement that you have. Look at the chart. The conditional statement goes from P to Q. The converse flips it around and says Q to P. The inverse puts a not in each one, not P to not Q. And the contrapositive flips it and puts a not in each one, not Q to not P. It's easy to remember which related conditional statement does which thing. The converse flips it. 
You flip a coin, you flip a converse. Flip a coin, flip a converse. The inverse puts a knot in each one. The word not begins with N, and the word inverse begins with N. I N N. And the contrapositive simply does both. Flip a coin, flip a converse. Inverse begins with N, not begins with N, and the contrapositive does both. Write the converse, inverse, and contrapositive of each true conditional statement. Determine whether each related conditional is true or false. If a statement is false, find a counterexample. Number one. If you live in San Diego, then you live in California. The converse flips it. You can abbreviate CV for converse. If you live in California, then you live in San Diego. The converse flips it. Is that true or false? Well, that's false, because you could live in L.A. For the inverse, which you can abbreviate IV, you put a knot in each one. Make sure you use the original conditional statement to do this to. If you do not live in San Diego, then you do not live in California. And that's false. You could live in LA. For the contrapositive, which you could abbreviate CP, flip it and put a knot in each one. If you do not live in California, then you do not live in San Diego. And that's true. Converse flips it, inverse puts a knot in each one, and contrapositive does both. Number two, if a polygon is a rectangle, then it is a square. The converse flips it. Now don't say, if it is a square, then a polygon is a rectangle. Be a little bit more grammatically correct and say, if a polygon is a square, then it is a rectangle. And that's true. The inverse puts a knot in each one. If a polygon is not a rectangle, then it is not a square. Is that true or false? That's true. A rectangle has four right angles. If it doesn't have four right angles, it can't be a square. And the contrapositive flips it and puts a knot in each one. If a polygon is not a square, then it is not a rectangle. Is that true or false? In other words, can it be a rectangle but not a square? That's false, because you can be a rectangle and not a square. And there's a drawing of what the counterexample could be.